Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And we are here for the second half of the season, so hit that like button because we're starting out this episode off with rewarding our defensive and offensive players of the week. And as far as defense goes, it's going to go to my middle linebackers, both of them, Ryan Marshall and Michael Brock Thompson. They both played a huge role. They both had a sack last game. And they just stepped up in the second half. They're making a lot of plays. Offense, I imagine to go with two guys again. Cameron Yates definitely, I think, broke through a little bit last game. I think uh, he's finally arrived. And he's going to be a guy that we're going to give the ball to quite a bit throughout the game. And the other guy is a guy that he's actually our fifth rated receiver. But he's been killing lately. Amari Manuel. You can see, like, he's not great at anything he even has 78 speed he's not a fast guy but he just finds a way to get it done so Amari Manuel and Cameron Yates and then on the defensive side our middle linebackers are going to get the pride stickers this week so you know what's funny about this is that we are actually doing pretty good I mean we thought that we would be pretty much a dumpster fire but we're doing pretty good and we're going up against a team that's doing really well I mean, look at them. I mean, look at the total offense, total defense. I mean, they're pretty They're pretty good. I mean, their pass defense, fourth in the nation. They are shutting people down with the pass, and that's actually what, we're, what we do well right now. We're actually running the ball pretty well as well. So we're going to have a tough time throwing the ball. And their total defense is number 11 in the nation. So Louisiana Lafayette is not going to be an easy task. If we look at their schedule and see who they played, um, let's just go back to their schedule. They only lost one game, and that was to Arkansas by three points. So they their only loss is to an SEC school by three points. And that's actually kind of scary, to be honest. Look at their quarterback, 16 touchdowns eight interceptions 1500 yards just about i mean they're, they're just an all-around pretty good team so we got our work cut out for us we're gonna have to watch out for davis let's just look at his stats really quick let's look at his attributes so we're gonna have to face this guy probably for another season after this he's a junior red shirt 63205 jordan davis he's got 82 throw power 80 accuracy 81 speed so it looks like he's just a balanced quarterback and if you look at his uh attribute or stats here He's got about a 52% completion percentage, and he's doing pretty good. I mean, I can't lie. 135 is his quarterback rating, and it doesn't look like he gets sacked too much. He's got sacked 10 times. I don't think that's too many in seven games so far. I don't think that's too many. Let's just look at their running back here, uh, Trey Ragus. I think it's Ragus. I think it's Ragus. Trey Ragus. 513 yards rushing, four touchdowns. He's only a freshman, so we're going to get four years out of him. But look at him already. He's 79 overall, 90 speed, 90 excel, 90 agility. He's going to be pretty good. We're going to have to stop him, so hopefully he won't ca cause too many problems for us. But look at their receiving core. Pretty much spread out evenly across all their receivers. Uh, so we don't really have anybody to really target. And looking at their sack leader, Trev Miller. He's a senior left end. He's only 76 overall. Let's see his uh, attributes here. He's got 87 awareness, 85 strength. So, I mean, he's just a decent guy. I don't think they really have somebody that's rated like 90 overall or something like that on defense. They're just playing really well as a unit. So, this is going to be a good game. So, let's hop into this, man. The second half of the season starts now. Can we continue the winning ways? Let's see. Let's get it. Let's go. So here we are at the kickoff, continuing after our bye week, and here's Zorzula receiving the ball deep, finding an open hole, and getting us to the 30-yard line, decent field position to start this game. So here is Marcus Milam starting the game out under center, and usually I run the ball the first play of the game, but here he throws the ball out of bounds. Can't find a receiver on that one. So facing an early third and 10, here is Amari Manuel on the outside getting a nice catch and run after catch on that one. So now on a second and 10, a couple of plays later, here's Cameron Yates, but he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So facing a third and 12, another third down on this first drive. Here's Marcus Milam finding Sean Daquan over the middle. Nice catch that time by the senior at tight end. So here's Cameron Yates getting going some more. Seven yards for him. 
and he's shaking up a little bit on that play. So in comes Kuzo, and we get the pass over to Mason Wynn across the middle, but that one's not caught, so we have to go for it. On a fourth and six, we have good field position. And Marcus Bielum, wide open guy, and he overthrows him. And that's going to be an interception for the defense. And what a horrible throw. He had C.J. Goodwin wide open, and he overthrows him. So now Louisiana takes over at about the 40-yard line. And on a first and ten, here is Barnes getting a reception over the middle for six yards. So Davis from the shotgun on a second and four, running slants, finding Barnes on back-to-back -back plays there for the 20-yard reception. So now they're close to the 30-yard line. Here they are running the triple option. You're faking it to the receiver, to the running back, and Jordan Davis gets stopped that time by Danny Armstead. Nice play by the defensive end that time. And on a third and four, some more pressure causing Jordan Davis to throw it away, but they do settle for the long field goal and they do take advantage here on the first drive. So here comes this offense back out on the field. And the thing is, we have to get these easy throws, mainly because, you know, Milam, he's kind of streaky. I mean, I got to admit, he's kind of streaky. Garcia's more of the prototypical accurate passer from the pocket. Milam's more of a run first type of guy. But you can see his accuracy on that throw, not even close to the target. So we go for it once again on a fourth down. I'm figuring we're close to the 50. We have to go for it a wide open. Receiver Sean Daquan is open. And Milam overthrows it again. So another turnover early on in this game for the Coastal offense. So here comes our defense back on the field. And they did a pretty good job of stopping them, holding them to three points on the last drive after giving up decent field position. So here is Davis one more time facing the blitz, but finding a receiver over the middle. He flips it across the field for a 38-yard gain. Look at this move that, that Terry, he gets pretty much lost on that one in coverage. And somehow he, the quarterback finds him. So now we are down 10-0 in this game. And Marcus Milam has to make something happen here on offense. But once again, this time Paco Ashton is wide open and he misses him. Some inaccurate throws are killing us early on in this game. And here on third and ten, another open Amari manual. And for some reason, Marcus Milam is just off his game. We gave him a couple of easy throws early on in this game, get, getting his confidence going. But luckily, we have a good defense so far. Jordan Davis getting tackled that time by the middle linebacker, uh, Ryan Marshall. And on the next play, oh, another one-yard game. So our defense is actually doing pretty good. So on a third and nine from the shotgun, here's Davis throwing to the outside. But nice play that time by Preston Mays and Anthony Lorenz in coverage. So now we get the ball back here. And what do you know it? Marcus Milam can't get the ball off, gets sacked. So now facing a third and 20. This time we have to put Emilio Garcia in because Milam is not doing well. So here we are, nobody to throw to, and we get swallowed up. Going to have to punt once again. So our offense has not done anything up in the first quarter. So now we're on to the second quarter, and here is Regis getting the handoff, and he's getting up the middle for the 15-yard gain. And we've kind of had that Brent, Ben Badot break mentality this game. But as you can see, they're trying to get us going on defense. And guess who picks us up? Orlando Norman, the freshman. Take another look. Bounces off his hands. And I'm not so sure that didn't touch the ground. But I think Orlando Norman had a good grasp on it as it was going to the ground. And he comes up with the pick. What an interception. And that's the first interception by him this season. So now here comes our offense. Can we get some momentum going? Go set up with pretty good field position. On a third and 13, here's Amari Manuel getting open. And remember the big game that he had last week. He definitely stepped up. So we're going to have to get, get the ball to him a lot more in this game. And here's CJ Goodwin inside the five-yard line. He's shaking up on that one. So here we are with a second and goal, trying to get Marcus Milam out of these passing situations. So we try to run the ball up the middle. 
So on a third and goal, here is Cameron Gage trying to run the end around, but gets tackled right at the one yard line. And we're not selling for the field goal. We're going for it. So we call the quarterback sneak and Marcus Malum gets tripped up and can't get in for the touchdown. Is stopped right on the one yard line. Disastrous start to this offense as Louisiana takes back over and on the first play getting 10 yards so getting a little bit of cushion for Davis here in the shotgun and on the next play throws the ball deep but somehow oh Malone God. comes up with it snags it over Donnell Hudson and that's gonna be a 90 yard pass take another look Hudson gets snagged on badly look at this Bruh. I mean just straight snagged on and Malone takes it 90 yards for the touchdown and what disaster for this defense we were actually playing really good on defense up to that point but here back on offense on the first play here is Marcus Milam once again throwing into coverage not having a good game throwing the ball that one actually looked like it was to the deep receiver, but that was actually to the shallow crosser, and he just overthrew him by a mile. So now here's Louisiana set up with great field position. Here is Regis trying to stumble in, but Cedric Granger does get the tackle that time. So on a second and goal, one more time, here is Danell Hudson maybe making up for that play where he got snagged down for 90 yards. And on a third... In goal here is Frederick Billups and Ryan Marshall tag teaming for the sack that time, both getting in there, and we are going to get them to settle for the field goal. So here is Marcus Milam. Can he get his offense going here in the second quarter with a minute and a half left? And here he's getting an easy completion to Cameron Yates. And one more time, look who's open, but I'm not going to throw that with the way he's been throwing. Marcus Milam needs to settle down, run the ball. So here is Marcus Milam one more time, throwing to the outside. Another mistake by Milam, holds it a bit too long and throws an interception, three turnovers for this coastal offense here in the first half. And Louisiana is just taking advantage of this great field position as on a first and 10, throwing the ball deep. And Bruh. once again, Keenan Barnes snags this time on Darius Terry. Take another look at this. I mean, that ball was thrown in a spot. Oh Terry just God. didn't have the ball skills to get to that one. And Barnes snags it. So two huge snaggers for touchdowns. And man, can we get this offense going? It is 27 to nothing. This game is ugly already as we knew this would be a tough game, but we didn't think it would be like this as we are on the road and almost to the second half as Amari Manuel's getting open one more time for another big reception. So here is Marcus Milam. Can he at least get some points on the board on a first and 10? 20 seconds left, finding Cameron Yates and finally... We get into the end zone for the touchdown and one touchdown, three interceptions for Marcus Milam in this first half. And who knew Cameron Yates was a great receiver like he's been this season. I did not expect that going into this season as they just have one last heave towards the end zone. That one's picked off by Preston Mays before the half and he's gonna get tackled, but it's gonna be a 20 point deficit going into halftime for Coastal, 27 to seven. Can we come back in this second half? That is the question. But they start out this half with the ball. Can our defense come up with some stops? Give the offense the ball as we make this second half run, but not running the ball like this with Regis and Davis as this triple option. They've watched the film on us. They know we cannot stop the option as Davis keeps it this time up the middle and he's going to get it all the way inside the five yard line as Louisiana, their offense is starting to click now. 
two big plays as Davis tries to run the ball this time, but Cedric Granger and Ryan Marshall are both in for the tackle. So on a third and goal here, sending a little bit of a blitz here, and he still gets a lot of time to throw the ball, and Jamarcus Bradley is there for the touchdown, and our defense just could not hold up that entire drive as we did have them down to a third and goal, but... We have to see what Milo can do. Can he bring us back into the game? But this is a good start. CJ Goodwin, nice route that time. Wide open throw for the 26-yard reception. So on a first and 10 now, past the 50-yard line. This time Cameron Yates is getting to the outside, out running a defender and getting a 14-yard gain close to the 30-yard line. So on a second and four here, four and a half minutes left. Here is Preston Mays in at receiver getting a little offensive duty here in the third quarter as our guys, we do a lot of subbing on offense, so it's it's not uncommon to see some of our defensive players. You know Harry Lord has been in at receiver. He's also in a lot, and Marcus Milam doing, doing it himself here. So on a first and goal, here is Cameron Yates finding some running room and getting in for the touchdown, but this lead is still at 20 points as we cannot stop this option defense. As Cedric Granger can't make the tackle, but Regis does trip over him and goes for a 16-yard carry. So here is Regis one more time, getting the outside carry, picking up a couple of blocks, and getting the first down. So now three minutes left in this third quarter. A jet sweep this time, and it looked like that was intended for the receiver, but Regis takes it as he gets a 16-yard carry. So this running attack of this Louisiana offense is just killing us as Regis, another big hole, and he gets to the eight-yard line on that carry, 18 yards. Every carry seems to be above 10 or 15 yards as Jordan Davis finishes off this drive, and they've already put up 41 points on us. As here is Marcus Milam coming back out on offense, finding Paco Ashton, taking a big hit. But we need these big plays, man. We got to keep going this no huddle offense as Marcus Milam rolls out to the left this time, throws to the outside. Nice catch that time by Cameron Dixon, but take a look. Marcus Milam is down, and Emilio Garcia is going to come in. We'll have an update on that come next drive. So here is Harry Lord getting in on offense, like I said earlier. And he's actually a pretty good offensive player. I can't lie, he's pretty good. Here he is for another reception, three yards. So now here's Emilio Garcia from the shotgun. This time throwing over the middle, Paco Ashton wide open on that one. And now we're inside the five yard line. So on a first and goal, trying to run this jet, jet sweep. Finding a hole is Cameron Yates. And he gets in for the touchdown. So Cameron Yates has two rushing touchdowns, one receiving. He has all the touchdowns for us. And now we're almost close to the fourth quarter. So can this defense get another turnover? Because we're going to need one, but not when the offense is clicking like this. We're all worried about the run. And what do you know? They pass the ball, getting it to their tight end for the big game. So now on to the fourth quarter. Here is Regis on a draw play on a third goal, third and six, he can't get the first down. So they kick another field goal. Their kicker has a leg on him, and that just adds some more points to the board for Louisiana as we have to drive down this field with Emilio Garcia. Turns out Milam's out for the game. We do not know if it's an extended injury, but he's at least out for this game. So Emilio Garcia is going to have to lead us the rest of the way. So here he is on a first and 10 this time, throwing to the outside, finding CJ Goodwin for the uh, nice reception that time. So now he's got 56 yards receiving in this game. Make that 60 something as he gets another completion. So on a third and seven now, past the 50 yard line, here's Emilio Garcia feeling the pressure and he's just throwing it away. He can't get it away to his receiver. So now fourth and seven can he make a conversion here and look who's wide open it's cj goodwin one more time inside the five yard line as 
Emilio Garcia actually making quite a bit of accurate throws here as he gives it to Cameron Yates on the counter. So now four minutes, 50 seconds left in this game as Sean Daquan runs an outside slant. Don't see that route often. And he gets in for the touchdown. So here is our defense back out on the field. Can we get a stop there? Nice tackle by Cedric Granger as Davis on a third and six finds some running room. And man, is that a killer. Right when you got him down to a third down, the quarterback just finds a way to scramble and pick up the first down. So here is Davis one more time. And this option offense just cannot be stopped. I mean, look at this. Every play is an option play. We get him down to another third and three, and somehow Jordan Davis wills his way to the first down. So they are just milking this clock. So now two and a half minutes left in the second quarter. And the wrong angle taken by Ryan Marshall that time allows Regis to run in. And they have 51 points here at home for Louisiana. And what can we do? I mean, we cannot do anything in this game as Emilio Garcia just trying to bring this team back. But that's not going to do it as they get another interception. And that pretty much spells the end of the game as Davis one more time to add insult to injury Rakes gives Darius Terry a mean stiff arm on that one and that's another touchdown 58 points so we just bring in the backups here as we get to see redshirt freshman Kashawn Curtin at quarterback and you know he's a guy that he's looking like he might be our future at quarterback and he's kind of just sitting back learning the offense. So I want to see what he's got in this one-minute drill. Can he complete some passes? I want to see some other guys that maybe don't get much playing time either. So there's for, uh, Felipe Cuzo getting the handoff. And here's Kashawn Curtin on a second and ten rolling out. And he takes a big hit. You know he can run the ball. He's a lot bigger than the other two quarterbacks. Emilio Garcia is big. He's 6'6 about. But he can't really run. And that's the thing. Kashawn Curtin, he's big and can run as he throws this one. Showing off his arm strength, get it to Javier Garcia, our third string running back. So now 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here is Kashawn Curtin getting a nice throw that time. On the run to Zach Zorzula, the third, the free safety getting in at receiver. So here he is one more time finding CJ Goodwin. So a lot of nice throws. I, I like what I'm seeing from Kashawn Curtin as C.J. Goodwin goes over 100 yards with that catch. And on the next play, a couple of plays later, he gets in for the touchdown on the sneak. So nice to see the redshirt freshman get in for the touchdown. But that's going to be the end of this game as we don't really have a great game all around. I mean, our offense, we turn the ball over four times, especially with those fourth down inaccurate throws. It really killed us early on in the game. It allowed Louisiana to set up with great field position pretty much every time they had the ball. So we got to cut down these turnovers. It was a tough team we were going up against. I mean, that defense plays way above their ratings. They're really, really fast, really good. They get in on every single throw. A lot of those throws were just rush throws. A lot of them were just inaccurate throws. So hopefully we can clean that up. And we do not know if Marcus Milam is going to be healthy for next game. So Emilio Garcia's got to be ready to start in his place. So we'll see how it goes. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, because, man, we might be still in the thick of things in our division, but I can't lie. We're probably going to have to win out to even have a shot at the conference championship. But it's getting less and less unlikely as we continue to lose another game. But let's just see, man. Let's build off of this. Let's learn from this. Let's get better. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.